Hello friends, Pastor Preston is my name. I'm very excited to come your way today. By the special grace of God, I serve as the senior pastor and president of Perfect Law Believer Centers, which makes me the chief servant of the ministry of Christ as consigning PLBC. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, uh, today I'll be, I would like to share something with you from the Old Testament. And of course, it will be great. It will help you a lot. And when, when we say Old Testament, we mean the First Testament. Uh, we call it Old Testament because there's another testament. It's not old, right, if we see it in the eyes of Christ. Okay, it's only old and outdated when we look at it in the eyes of Moses. Remember, Scripture talks about when the reading of Moses, um, you know, happens in Second Corinthians 3. It says we're in blindness. But, of course, I want to quickly say something before I begin to read where I want to read, uh, where I'm supposed to talk to you and teach you from. Yeah, it's important that you understand that in Colossians chapter number one, also in Romans, the last chapter of Romans, Paul clearly spoke and called the Old Testament, which of course is the first testament, as misery. Okay, so if you will read it from um, a normal mind, right, literal, or from, uh, you know, the mindset of the prophet, then you will be highly misled. And that's the big thing we've got in the church today. That's what we keep seeing because a lot of people have been reading the word of God wrongly and they have been working in error because they've not been able to decode the misery. Colossians says this is the misery that has been hid for ages and has been made to us. And it tells you how he has been made to us. It says Christ in you, the hope of glory. So of the Old Testament or the First Testament is not seen with Christ. There is no hope of glory. If you see it outside of Christ, there will be no hope of glory. It only only will have hope of glory when we see it in Christ. Glory to God, somebody. Don't forget Hebrews chapter number one. The Amplified says, God spoke to our ancestors or our fathers by the prophet. Yeah, and he calls it with, uh, by portions of the truth. And then the next chapter, the next verse, sorry, that's verse number two and three says, but in today, if we use the Passion Translation, it says, he speaks the language of Christ. He speaks the language of Christ. And it tells you why. He said, because Christ is the express image of of the God that Jesus in, by himself told you in John chapter number 10 verse number 8 it says all that came before me they are thieves and robbers in 10 it says I am come that you might have life and have it in full in level 12 13 it tells you that all the ones that performed before him they were all islands that means they were hired to do a job they were not the owner of a job it says I am the door hallelujah glory to God somebody of course in Luke's chapter number 24 25 26 45 we saw where Jesus began to say things about the fact that all of the things written of the prophet were written consigning himself and he began to expand them to the people how this old things written was consigning himself and then in 45 the bible says he opened their understanding that they might be able to comprehend misery so this is the point right uh, if you will not see the old testament in the eyes of christ you will be totally wrong you will mislead yourself as a matter of fact you can never be correct that's why you see in first peter chapter number two verse number two it tells you desire the sincere meek of the world that you may grow thereby the word there is logicos which talks about the rational and logical reasoning which is Christ so until you create a Christ mindset you may not be able to interpret scriptures correctly glory to God somebody hallelujah as a matter of fact this is the point if you will not be able to develop the mindset of Christ eradicate the Old Testament and read only the new episodes read it literally yeah and with the mind opening mind of the spirit you will be able to get a point but you see the problem if you have read the old testament literally and you begin to read the episodes right you will always find confusion you will only want to pick the part that makes sense with the old testament right or, or just isolate them to use them right but you will not be able to have it on context that means reading it as a letter and interpreting it correctly because you've been contaminated by the mindset and the structure of the old prophet to reading the scriptures that's why it says what the reading of the letter when you read it in moses it says you are in blindness hallelujah this is just the big stuff so there's nothing wrong with the old testament if you'll be able to see it in the eyes of christ and that is the eyes of love no vengeance the spirit of love that spirit to which you understand the goodness and the kindness of god right that expression of his spirit as it consigns christ how christ showed us 
even in the episodes, what you find he manifests. Okay, very important. All the prophets of old, they couldn't show us God in all clear expression. As a matter of fact, remember, as close as Moses was, what did they say? He only saw the back of God. But scripture tells us that Jesus is. to God somebody okay let's go when Samuel grew old he appointed his sons as Israel's leader I'm thinking why did he appoint his sons as Israel's leader because that's where we learn a lot of the things that we find in the church today when a pastor begins to grow old he starts thinking of appointing his children as the leader of the church right well maybe it would have been easier for him to have learned from from Eli right Eli had his sons who somehow just took up uh, positions when Eli was old. But of course, you saw how they messed things. Scripture even said they were not godly. Yeah, they just messed things up and all that. Today, we find that the minister of God is either forcing their children to be godly or forcing them to fit in positions. And towards, they really don't even know the will of God to communicate it to the people. They just talk from the generics or do the best that they feel that they can do because you're trying to take that stuff as your father's company. But of course, it's even not right to learn from the prophet. Why don't you learn from Jesus, right? Because in, Jesus has raised up his, his church. Why don't you learn from Jesus? Learn from Paul. Learn from, from, from Peter, James, and John. We never saw that they did such kind of thing. Glory to God, somebody. Okay, so let's see the danger that happened afterwards. It says the name of his first son was Joel, and the name of the second was Abijah, and they served as Bathsheba. Three, look at it. It says, but his sons did not follow his ways. Think about that. So painful. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. You see that? What sentiment can cause the pain and the trouble it can cause? That's why you shouldn't operate sentiment as spirituality. Yeah? As a matter of fact, a lot of times people say, Tossi has a lot of hoes. It's given to this, my son, and all that. Sometimes these are emotions because emotion speaks like God, but it's not necessarily God, right? You must be careful, right? If you're not very sure, validate it from people who know the Spirit of God, right? So you don't do the wrong thing in the house of God and begin to affect the will of God or affect the result that God is trying to produce per time because you have truncated it with a natural cause as against the will of God. Okay, it says, they turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. Look at verse 4. Look at 4. It says, So all the leaders of Israel gathered together and came to Saul at Ramah. They said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us. Interestingly, this was just a good, this was just a good reason for them to get what they really wanted. It wasn't because the sons were not performing right that they wanted a king. They had been spying and admiring other nations how they were doing things as we read you're going to find it yeah so it's appoint us a king to lead us such okay look at it such as all the other nations have listen i want you to say this this is one of the biggest problem in the church today we like to do things the way the word does does things because we we are always associated with them and this is terrible we are not supposed to do things the way the word does things our kingdom has a certain way things go it's very important. Don't live your life to please people, to impress people. You don't think what people will think. You think what God thinks about a thing. I want to say that again. What does God think about a thing is what you should think and not what people think about a thing. How are you listening to me? When you live your life for people, you are kinda, you're working in vanity and the love of the Father is not growing in your heart. But if you truly pay attention to the Spirit, you will always find that you will advance in the course of, of the will of God. You don't 
live your life by what people think or what they do and all that. You must enjoy the will of God because first you must trust God to understand that God has your best interest at heart. You must understand that God will not ask you to do a thing that is not in your best interest. Listen, let me say this to you. I've always preached before and I say it again. The word of God is not to do God favor. The word of God is to do you favor. You know, maybe because you think if you keep the word of God, you're doing him favor. And Taurus, uh, that's why you see it as a stress to do it. But you forget that the word of God is looking out for you. The word of God is for your best interest. The word of God is for your glory. Think about it. Even if we choose not to do the word as so to speak, God could terminate everybody and raise a new generation. But in his love, he won't do that. So his word is to protect, preserve, prosper you as against you thinking you're trying to do something to favor. That's why you see some people say, well, if you don't do this for me, I will not serve you again. If you don't do it for me, I will not keep your word again and all that. Like you doing God some kind of favor. You got to be careful about that. No, you do yourself favor when you keep the word of God. So don't admire the word. Don't admire the word. No, 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 no. Isaiah says, the Gentiles shall run unto our light. We are not supposed to run unto the light of the Gentiles. They are supposed to run unto our light because we're a shining light. Glory to God, somebody. It is great for God to lead us than for men to lead. Amen. So watch this. Look at what happened. Right? Six. But when they said, but when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you that have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. Whoa. Listen, if you never believed that God is nice, God is kind, God is sweet, and even in your wrong, God still loves you. This is one great proof from the Old Testament for you to believe it. They had rejected God, yet he still says, do what pleases them. Because God, in his, in his kindness and his love for man, always wants to impress you. Always wants to do something to make you happy. Always wants to do what he thinks will bring you happiness, even if it's not pleasing to him. This is deep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Whoa. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. And in, in your spirit, we learn to love you right. Just like you do everything to make us happy. By your spirit, as we focus on your word, we begin to do everything to make you excited with our life. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay, let's go on. This is so nice. So sweet. Hallelujah. Look at it. So he says, well, it's not you who have rejected me. It's them who have rejected me as your king. Eight. And he says, as they have done from the day I brought them up, up, uh, up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them. But warn them solemnly and let them know that the king who will reign over them will claim as will, will claim some things as is right okay now uh no time i would have just gone to read all the stuff for you so you could see right so it now begins to tell the fact that the king a king who is going to come of course is going to demand certain stuff from them right as against how god has lead them you know and, and it says a lot a lot of time the best part of them the best things of them is going to take maybe i just read 10 right it says some are told all some are told all the word of the lord to the people who were asking him for a king he said this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as a right. He will take your sons, make them serve with, with his chariot and horses, blah, 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 and so many stuff like that. Glory to God. So let's leave all that and come to uh, 19. It says, but the people refuse to listen to Samuel. You know when man has made up his mind, anything you're going to be telling them that seems to make sense, they don't want to hear to say, let's just have it like that. We don't care. Anything the king wants to take, let him take. We want to be like other people. What a shame. What a shame. You see, man, they always wanted to have things their way. It started from the beginning. That's why it took a lot of time. So man can see that his ways have always not been the best. And surely... Come back to depend and trust in God, God's provision, which is Jesus in the garden. And of course, who offers us grace without hard work, strength, and pain. So you see, in man's disobedience, they had caused all the pains and troubles, the wars that he fought and everything. Man's disobedience as against what the Lord had provided for, for them in his love. Look at it. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. Which means the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is the love of God. 
The love of God offered us the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at it, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So it is his love that gave us Jesus, who is grace to us, who is capacity to us. Glory to God. Okay? Okay? But he says, but they refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. 20. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and feed our battles. So you see, all that journey of kingship was, was an action of carnality. It was carnality that produced kingship in his kingdom. Why? Because God never wanted them to have a king over them. God wanted them to be kings and priests according to his will. That's why in Revelation you saw it. It says, and I've made you kings and priests. So it tells you that king, sheep, and priesthood had always been, even before Jesus showed up as an incarnate Christ. This is very important that you understand it. It has always been there. Man always wanted to go in his own selfish kind of ways. Wanting to feel among as against being the character and system and structure of the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, 20. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battle. 21. When Samuel heard all that the people said, he repeated it before the Lord. And the Lord said, listen to them. What a loving God. And give them a king. Then Samuel said to the Israelite, everyone go back to your own town. Think about that. What do you really want? Is it in line with the will of God for you? What do you really want? Why do you allow the one who didn't put this word together, who just came here to feature or is walking in opposition to determine the things that you want out of life? To define your values for you. To define the systems and structure of how you do things. Why? Stay in the will of God. He says it brings them in perfect peace. Those that put their minds stayed on God. Glory to God. In Colossians 3, it says set your affections on the things above. Don't look at people. Don't say he's dressing like that. Oh, I must dress like that. Don't say he's owning this. Oh, I must own that. Don't say, oh, they're behaving like that. Oh, I must behave like that. Don't say, I want to have this stuff. Oh, they must have it. Don't do all of all that stuff. Don't do that. Glory to God. God has always wanted to rule his people. Lead his people in his own ways. But you see, when you want your way, he allows you. And make you see, even in that he still protects you, guides you, right? Keeps keep being with you, but makes you see that that's always not the best for you and the perfect for you. Glory to God. So you must trust the way of God. You must trust the way of God. Hallelujah. Oh, I, oh I, I'm hiding. Why are you hiding? I don't want them to know that I'm trekking. They'll feel like, they'll feel like I'm, I'm poor. Who are the day? Who are the day? Glory to God. Who are the day? Do you know, do you realize that a lot of the, the apostles before us, they were not massively wealthy? They never complained about it one day. Did you notice they didn't live their life for what people thought about? They even forfeited some natural things and gained because they understood eternal life. They understood eternal life. If some of you were Jesus Christ, you say, Lord, even if I want to go to the cross, I, I think I need to marry a wife as well. I, I need to taste everything of this word. Think about it. Paul said I have to forfeit many things that I may cause, uh, allow the cause of the gospel to spread. Paul said for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Don't mislead yourself in selfishness, in carnality. John says that I may decrease, that he will increase. Glory. That I may increase, that he may decrease. Don't run by the culture of this word. Run by the culture of the word of God. By the culture of the word of God, trust the will of God, trust the way of God, trust the opinions of God as against your personal opinion. If you really want to make progress according to his will and meet him on that day and be excited. God never misleads. He never uses a dump. The devil has nothing good for you. Even if he starts up, starts good, it's going to end up very bad. Think about this. That's my message today. I believe it brings you a lot of blessing. Stay with God. 
Trust God. Stay in his will. There's nothing more fantastic than the will of God. Thank you very much. I love you. And I'll see you again.